latest episode of The Mandalorian, titled The Child, has solidified its place amongst my favorite Star Wars ever at this point. While I love the epic scale of the sequel trilogy and the fun of the anthology films, The Mandalorian feels like a true extension to the classic Star Wars galaxy, and specifically that of the original Star Wars movie itself. I cannot emphasize enough how good this episodic Star Wars show is. Episode 2 was very different than the pilot. This was a slower, more subdued episode, where we focused primarily on The Mandalorian and the asset, now called The Child. We follow the Mandalorian traversing this planet with a young baby Yoda at his side in his floating Yoda bassinet, and this leads to an altercation with a group of Trandoshans attempting to capture the asset. These are the same Trandoshans from Episode 1 who overheard Grief Karga, giving the Mandalorian the information on this puckless bounty. It's clear from this battle that multiple groups of Imperial Remnants and bounty hunters are on this specific job, all with a different objective. To me, it creates even more intrigue into Baby Yoda. And the stare down between the Mando and the Baby Yoda after this battle ends with the Trandoshans spoke volumes to me. Not only is the Mandalorian absolutely confused as to why this infant would be so important, but in my eyes, at this point he feels that it's his duty to protect this child at all costs. The best example of this kind of thing that I can think of right off the top of my head is when the Mandalorian is cleaning his wounds in this episode. The setting is at night, it's quiet, and we hear the electrical buzzing of the Mandalorian's first aid kit. And the tiny baby Yoda is gazing on, almost curious. You can tell that whatever the Mandalorian is using to clean and fix his wounds hurts like hell. And the baby Yoda ends up getting out of his floating egg crib, making its way over to the Mandalorian, and puts his hand out as as if he's about to use the force to heal him. In my opinion, this Yoda is very aware of what's going on around him because to me, it looked like he was thinking about helping the Mandalorian with his wounds before he jumped out of his pod. And I think that this whole thing is a big deal. First of all, it means that the power to heal wounds has been announced indirectly with this one scene. We haven't seen something like this happen yet, at least not to my knowledge, but I bet we will eventually see it occur. And I wonder if this is being added into the Mandalorian to explain some potential powers that a future person like maybe Rey will have in the Rise of Skywalker. But for now, that is just speculation. The Mandalorian looks at the tiny baby Yoda as if it's merely reaching out and just being weird. He places it back in its egg crib and gets back to work on his chest plate. And again, the baby Yoda comes back, reaching its hands out towards the Mandalorian's wounds. This tiny little Yoda trying to help this big, tough Mandalorian is without a doubt the most charming, cutest thing I've ever seen in Star Wars. It was amazing. And obviously, we, we the audience, we get it. This little guy can tap into the Force. The Mandalorian doesn't get that yet. And one thing I noticed is the Mandalorian is rather gentle with the Baby Yoda. Most of the time, it seems like the Mandalorian is a walking muscle. But with the infant, we see a more sort of tender side start to emerge. The Mandalorian is turning into a sort of surrogate father figure for this orphaned being. The next few scenes are of the two making their way back to the Razor Crest. The music in this part is phenomenal, and honestly, it gave me chills, and it still does. The motif that hits you as the Mandalorian clears the horizon is powerful, and it reminds me of Blade Runner again. R really, really big vibe of Blade Runner, but it also has this essence of like heroism in it. It's hard to explain. One of the best things about this episode was that the score actually was more musical rather than simply a synthetic bed of sounds. And don't get me wrong, a lot of episode one's music was incredible. You know, it's creating a new landscape of sound for Star Wars. But this episode was a welcomed happy medium between that digital realm and the big orchestral arrangements that we're used to for Star Wars. And around here in the episode, we get to probably my favorite part of the entire thing, the return of the Jawas. A ton of Jawas are tearing apart the Razor Crest, and it all feels like 100% classic 1977 Star Wars. You can hear their iconic language and the cackles, and the ship is 
literally gutted. Without hesitation, the Mandalorian starts disintegrating them from afar, and shit hits the fan. The Jawas close up shop and take off in their sandcrawler, and what happens next can only be described as if Indiana Jones was a Mandalorian in a Star Wars movie with Jawas. The Mandalorian runs after the sandcrawler, scaling the side, and trailing behind the Mandalorian at a very high speed is the Baby Yoda in his little egg thing. And it's a super funny inserted shot during the sequence. I mean, the visual effects for all of this are just unbelievable. The Mandalorian makes his way to the top of the Sandcrawler, only to be faced with a dozen Jawas, all armed, and they zap him until he falls right about 50 feet to the ground. To me, this scene was like a perfect 10. It's tense, it's suspenseful, it's funny, it's weird, and at the end, it subverts your expectations that the Mandalorian is about to dominate these Jawas. This is why I really like this episode too. This show isn't just super dude guy getting money on tough jobs and being a badass. It's about this guy who has a heart who happens to get into situations where he is a badass and ultimately he's trying to pay the bills in a lawless galaxy. Plus, fighting and weapons are a part of his religion as he states later on in the episode. So it's clear that the Mandalorian can't get off the planet at this point and the only thing left to do is to visit our new favorite Ugnaught, Kuil. I hope this character remains a presence in the Mandalorian. There is something about Kuil being sort of a guiding light for the Mandalorian, which I really enjoy. Kuil's reaction to what the asset turns out to be is priceless. He's like, it's just this? It's just this thing? And you can also tell how over this situation the Mandalorian is. He has no ship, and he's basically given up to a certain degree. But Kuil being the wise alien of the series suggests that maybe his ship isn't destroyed, merely stripped. And he tells the Mandalorian they will trade for the scavenged parts. And just to say again, I, I love how Kuil ends his sentiments with, I have spoken. You know, I said it in the last review, but it's a super funny idiosyncrasy. And now it's essentially a meme. And we also know that besides terrible stew, Yoda aliens also eat fully live living reptilian creatures. And I love that during this moment, the Mandalorian is acting like a dad here, telling the little guy to spit it out. It was really funny. So this next very brief scene actually had me laughing really hard. And I don't think it was the intention of the director or the script to have that kind of reaction from the viewer, but I digress. It's Kuil on a blurg dragging the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda behind him on a platform, and it's raining at night, and they're moving outrageously slow, and the music is super epic. They do end up catching up to the Sandcrawler the next day, and we see the hustle and bustle of the Jawas at work, prepping mechanical parts for trading, and then they see Kuil in the Mandalorian. And obviously, they haven't forgotten about their previously disintegrated friends. All the Jawas have their blasters out, ready for a fight, and the Mando has to comply with keeping his weapons on the platform rather than on his person, and it's here that we hear about weapons being a part of his religion. It was a nice little lore insert, even if it's diet lore, and I'm sure more Mandalorian lore will be presented to us as the story goes on. So there's a lot of back and forth on what the Mandalorian could trade in exchange for the ship parts back, and there's even a gag of them wanting the Yoda baby, but what this trade ultimately turns into is a request for the Mandalorian to retrieve an egg. Yes, an egg. Again, the way the Jawas get so excited over this egg was amazing and hilarious. They kept chanting, the egg, the egg, the egg. And even though this was like pure comedy, it felt appropriate. Even in A New Hope, the Jawas are particularly whimsical, at least in my opinion. There's this like wide shot of the sand cruiser heading towards where the egg is supposed to be and you can just hear the audio of all the Jawas chanting still and you can actually see the words, the egg, and that actually made me lose it. So I, I thought the whole thing was a brilliant sequence and it was, it was very much so enhanced by the very busy music underneath as well. And the Jawas send off the Mandalorian to retrieve this egg. And again, the little Yoda chamber is following around the Mandalorian. And this ends up being very important. We keep seeing all these point of view shots from the Yoda baby and it's as if he is closely observing the Mandalorian's every move figuring him out, but these shots are also telling us to pay attention to this little guy, and at least that's my initial impression. The Mando comes across a cave, tightens his armor, heads in to find this egg, and is confronted with a giant beast called a Mudhorn. It looks like a cousin to a Reek. 
and that's the species that we saw from Attack of the Clones. And this thing is pretty brutal. The Mandalorian gets his ass kicked big time. He's thrown at least 30 feet a few times, with the final blow taking all of the wind out of him. And in a daze, the Mandalorian points his knife at this incoming beast about to kill him, and then we cut to a tiny green hand in a very familiar gesturing pose. This Yoder creature saves the Mandalorian from certain death by using the Force to stop the Mudhorn from killing him. The beast literally floats in the air. Now, when the power to maintain the hold was too much for the infant, it released the beast, and the little Yoda baby immediately fell into a recuperative sleep, and the Mandalorian ended up using this little window to stab the Mudhorn in its neck, killing it. Now, after this, when we finally see the egg that the Jawas sent the Mandalorian to find, it's the egg of this Mudhorn, and it's covered in muddy, dreadlock-looking things. And I love how weird this is. It's a hairy egg. Now, if this isn't bizarre Star Wars at its finest, I don't know what this is. The craziest thing about this whole egg situation too is that the Jawas just wanted to snack on the goo inside. They looked like a bunch of intergalactic poo bears eating honey. I mean, if you think about it, they almost got the Mandalorian killed over an egg because they wanted to eat. It's very amusing to me. There is a bit of an exchange between Quill and the Mandalorian on their journey home, both trying to understand what this little baby Yoda did out there with the Mudhorn. It's clear that Quill and the Mandalorian aren't too familiar with the Force, but we are. So it will be interesting seeing and watching the Mandalorian find out over time what exactly is going on and why. As the episode closes out, little baby Yoda is still fast asleep recuperating from his powerful use of the Force. Kuil and the Mandalorian rebuild the Razor Crest with all the parts they got back from the Jawas, and we get this retro montage of rebuilding the ship. I like that in each episode so far. There has been a showcasing of metal building with sparks and fire. It definitely gives this uh, 80s nostalgic vibe with the crossfades and the pumping style of music underneath what we're seeing, and I think it's a given that this show will give us some homages to the classic 80s aesthetics. But I'm glad that it's not too egregious about when it does. Now, there is this nice, but hopefully not final exchange between the Mandalorian and Kuil before he departs on his ship. The Mandalorian offers him a job or some money in exchange for all his help. But Kuil just wanted to help out. He's happy that his valley is now at peace. And the Mandalorian respects that. Kuil says, good luck with the child. May it survive and bring you a handsome reward. I have spoken. I think we will want to come back to that line at the end of this season. I think it's a bit of a play on words and the trajectory of the Mandalorian. May the child survive and bring him a sweet reward. I think we're talking about something more significant than Calamari Flan, but we will have to wait and see in the following episodes what this actually all turns out to be. This episode is without a doubt one of my favorite Star Wars things I've seen since the OT. And again, that's not to say I'm not in love with the current saga. However, there is just something about this show that is remarkable. It doesn't feel like a member berry festival. It truly feels like what would be happening five years after Return of the Jedi. You know, it's, it's hard to explain, but maybe you understand what I'm saying. Anyway, that does it for my recap and review of episode two of The Mandalorian. I hope that you guys have been enjoying these episodes as much as I am. I think they're pretty much amazing, and it seems to only be getting better, so I cannot wait to see episode three. So with that said, may the force be with you, and Adat is signing off.